I don't know if we're live yet. Do you think we're live? Live from downtown Houston, it's Learn to Paint Tuesdays with Ginger Cook. Hey, Ginger. Hey, John. Are you there? I'm here. Hi, John. Okay, I'm in the same room. It's hard to miss me. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're worlds apart here. Come on. All right. Okay. Yeah, we're here. It's good to know. You know, we never know. There's not there's some little light that comes on and says we're live. We just have to sort of, we kind of think we are, and then we just hope that's true. So welcome, everybody, to Learn to Paint with Ginger on Tuesdays. Woo All right. Woohoo. So this is fun. This is where we really discuss some in-depth things on painting. We're going to do a painting, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, all kinds of stuff tonight. But uh, what, 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 if you're new to the show, if you just tuned in because somebody said there was a live show, what we're painting is a hibiscus flower. May I you shoot to that? Sure. You want to shoot down here to our hibiscus flower in case yep. you guys missed it? And I'll this put you in a little This is what we're painting. Window. Okay, right there. We're painting this hibiscus flower. I painted this earlier today, and, and um, I don't know what size I thought this was. Well, we thought is, it was we, a 9 by 12. We thought this was a 9 by 12, but it is no size. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It is some weirdy size. I'm telling you what, you should always bring your tape measure to the art store. Good lesson, because whatever size this is, you couldn't frame it. This is some no. weird, funny little size, but doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead. I decided to go bigger, so we're going to go ahead and paint it. What was this? This is 11 by 14. 11 by 14, because it just, see, it's not that much bigger. See what I mean? Yeah, so, 9 like by 12 best. was a lot smaller. That's, that is like a 11 and 3 quarter it's, it's three quarters. Yeah. 13 and three quarter by 10 and three quarter. And you got to watch that because... Uh, uh, I've often said that before, is that uh, it may be labeled one thing. Have a tape measure with you in your purse. Make sure it is what they say it is. Because strictly on a thin uh, canvas like this, if you're going to put it in a frame, it's very disheartening to discover <laughs> that your picture doesn't go in any frame, ready-made frame anybody ever heard of. You know, So, again, tape measures are good. So, uh, not that I strictly seem to have followed my own advice. I just read the label and thought it, we were good. So, okay. So, that being said, what we're going to start off with today is that a palette full of acrylic paint. We've got uh, titanium white. I haven't put the mixing white out. I actually bought some zinc white. There was a lot of question about what zinc white did. I bought a tube of it today. Oh, hey, it, we want to mention 40% off until Saturday at Michael's. Yeah, there's 40% off till Saturday at Michael's. So I went ahead. This tube would normally have been about $17.95, and I got 40% off on it, which was pretty nice. Got a nice big. I don't fool around. I always buy the giant tubes of stuff. Here's this nice big giant tube, and so I got this for... Right around uh, what seven dollars, eight dollars, something like that. Whatever it was, was was. It was what? worth it. Was worth it. Yeah, it was forty percent off. So anyway, instead of seventeen, so I think yeah. Okay, so I I got uh, I like to buy big tubes of white and things. You know, there's certain paints you're going to use. It's like buying one t roll of toilet paper at a time. Most <laughs> people buy four or five, right? Because you no, know, they're going to use it next month again. It's going to come around again. And the same thing with white paint. You're always going to use it. So then we've got cad yellow medium. Um, then we've got naphtha crimson, which is your primary red on the color wheel. Cad yellow medium is your uh, your primary yellow. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You can't mix those, okay? We've got yellow oxide, which is sort of a gold, ultramarine blue, magenta, cad red medium, and a color called cad yellow light. If you don't have it, don't sweat it. Just use some white with your yellow. But Sometimes it's nice to know about these colors, so we'll introduce you to a few. So the first thing we're going to do is paint a background. And I want to take a palette knife, and we're going to mix a color. Now, the background color that we want is like a pale peach, okay? So we're going to take some titanium white. That's, that's, the, that's the white that's like a door, okay? You can't see through it, titanium white, okay? And then we're going to take a tiny bit of tiny bit, what does that mean? A little bit, small amount of the cad yellow uh, light, or you could use cad yellow medium. Or as my now, father would say, a smidgen. And then we're going to, yes, yeah, smidgen, yeah. And then we're going to take, oh, I don't know, about 1% uh, cad red medium. And um, that's an orange, by the way, in case you were wondering. That's an orange color. And notice how I'm, I'm mixing this, squishing it, and kind of mixing it like that, pushing it down and mixing it like that and then pulling it toward me and squishing it again. And it doesn't have to be too perfect. I see people, honestly, I've taught art for a lot of years, and I've seen some students, they'll sit there and get so mesmerized by the mixing. I'm like, what you doing? I'm mixing a color. <laughs> for the next 10 minutes, I mean, you know, we only have so long in this class to paint. I mean, just that, really? Now you can kind of scrape it up like this. We know we're going to get more. 
Now here's the deal. Because of the way this flower is, we're going to do this underpainting a little differently. We want it to all go out in the form of a Starbucks burst. This, is, this lesson is about brush direction. It's really important that you start off with the right directions. And we almost like putting grooves in, a, in a, an old record, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, I have a damp brush. This is a number 12 filbert. You could use a, um, a bright brush. Now my canvas is pretty, um, it's been sanded. I'm just going to lightly mist this canvas, just slightly. Not much, but just slightly. And maybe just my paints a little bit. Now, there we go. That's going to cover it. I don't need it too thick, but I do need it covered. See, it's almost a sort of a very pale, almost skin tone peach. Uh, that would be a good, somebody says, how do you make skin tones? That's a good skin tone color, that, don't you think? You know, so we're going to, that's the color that's underneath the color that's underneath the color. And you'll notice I'm going out in sort of a starburst pattern away from the center to do this underpainting. I'm kind of putting grooves in the record. Now I've got about this far and I have used all the paint. See that? So now we have to put out more white paint and uh, which we um, have right here. Yeah, we brought it over. I just, uh, we brought it over. It's right here to the drawer. No comment from the peanut gallery. Good, good. You just keep, keep the comments to yourself, kid. It's, you know, that was right there. Give me a minute to catch up with myself. It's been one of those days. I felt just slightly off today. You know, just never felt quite awake from the moment I got up. And um, it just felt like going back to taking a nap all day long. It's been kind of that, but I've resisted. All right, so I'm going to make this as peach. It might be a little darker than what I had before, but it's all right. No worries. All right, we're going to start here like this. Come along here. It's a little more peachy, but that's fine. I just need some sort of soft peach color to go under here. And incidentally, there a question had come up uh, from several of you guys about how you make skin tones. And um, there's, a res there's a book you can buy on Amazon. And unlike other times when we have had these chats, I actually have the book in my hand. It's called Color Recipe, Mixing Recipes for Portraits, Oil and Acrylic and Watercolor. And what is so cool about this little book is, um, I mean, it really has some different, different ways of mixing colors, maybe ways you hadn't thought about. The, you know, colors you might want to add, skin tones, eye color, so forth. Look at that, eye color and so forth. So if, and, and this wasn't very much money. And John, if you wouldn't mind putting a link on our website for this one. I also have it on my Pinterest page, but uh, color mixing for portraits includes a color mixing grid, more than 500 col color combinations. And um, it's by William Powell. Anyway, that's a nice book. And it's a Wa Walter Foster book. Really, I think very handy. Uh, I would recommend it if you're into that sort of thing. So there we go. I just figured I would mention that since we're, I thought about that since we're sort of doing skin tones. You see, we're kind of making skin tones with this, uh, with this hibiscus. And uh, let's see, what else? Some other questions came up today. Somebody asked about a hue, didn't they, John? Something about a hue? Uh, yeah. Where, oh, that was an email. We got an email from yeah, someone. Yeah, hang on a second. Let me look that one up. So John's looking it up. In the meantime, if you are having trouble chatting and you're on an iPad, John did this nifty video. Look on our, our, our YouTube channel for it. And just, just a couple days ago, I did this video on how to set your iPad so that you can participate in the live chats. So if you missed that, I would encourage you to see that. Now look, see how I'm starting to bring all the colors in toward the center. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put the. I'm going to take a little bit of cad red medium now, and a little bit of um, cad yellow medium, make kind of an orange color like that. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to just streak some stuff in like this, just like this. We're going to come out here from the center, a little bit of cad red medium. We can barely see that. Can you see that? No, we can't. There's something going on with the lights. I'm not sure what it is. We're not no, we're not seeing that at all. Okay. You're not seeing my lights here we're coming not. in? It's got on the camera, but it's not coming through. Well, it's weird. Well, it's I've very pale. It. It's very pale here. So they're not seeing anything or just well, yeah, not no, seeing the color? That. What did you do before that? 
Just came in the here. Real, the real pale one on this side. Okay. Well, we're just going to kind of coming in here like this. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit of water in my little uh, saucer here. It's our little one we got in Mexico. How cute is that? A little handmade thing. And sometimes you just need the tip of your brush uh, wet. And uh, we're going to do that. And if you're wondering who's talking in the background, I didn't introduce in the beginning. That's um, our, the, you know, John Little. He's the uh, business partner and other half of GingerCookLive.Gallery. He's the, your tech wizard. He's the one that is moderating the show, and doing the cameras, all that good stuff, okay? So see, coming in here, a little bit more cad red. Maybe just some pure cad red now. It's pretty wet. can come in here like that. Now, the idea isn't to cover this up. You want to leave some of this lighter color showing. So you see, I'm just sort of doing some quick little streaks here. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. Don't, don't panic. Nothing too crazy. And because this is wet, it's going to mix on the canvas and be fairly soft and just come in toward the center like that. Okay, and it's sort of a, it's an interesting approach, isn't it? You wouldn't necessarily think that um, this is what you're doing. Just a little cad red now. I know it's going to want a little bit darker here. Maybe a little more red in here like that. Just pull it toward you and lift up. Pull and lift up. Here, here's a question. It's not the one I was looking for. It was another one. Okay. I recently painted a painting in acrylic. I work mostly in watercolor. I have varnished it. Not sure I like the background. Can I paint over it? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, varnish, um, you know, if you're using like a, a, a varnish, a brush on varnish, you can, you can uh, varnish and paint and varnish and paint because it molecularly binds to the, um, to the paint, okay? Sure, sure you can. Now, uh, now the spray on varnish, you can still probably paint over it, but the spray on varnish doesn't work quite the same way as the brush on varnish. I rarely ever use spray on varnish because, you know, you could always uh, paint over a brushed on varnish. Because it really does, it just it gives another. It's polymer. It grabs the, the paint and stays there. And you can keep adding. You can when you use a varnish and medium. If you don't buy the pure varnish, it's just called, uh, say, Liquitex uh, high gloss or, or matte varnish and medium. If you buy that, um, you could add a little bit to your paint as you paint too. I did find that. the uh, the original question we were looking for. Okay. Um, on the color wheel, there is a gray white scale in the inner ring. How do I use that? And then the second part, the second question she had was, um, I have a question about the word permanent describing an acrylic hue. What does that mean? All right. Well, let's talk about the grayscale first. Here's what she's talking about. You want to zoom in on this for us? Uh, let me find my zoomer. Can you zoom in on this right here? Because so, here's a, the grayscale right here on the color wheel. All and right. And there we go. All right. So now, um, if you imagine, here, here's the gray. You're talking about white is one and black is ten. All right. So if you're talking, so basically they have shades of gray from one to ten. So if you were to do a black and white picture of this, for instance, a graph and black and white photograph of my original painting, for instance, then you would look and see where on the gray scale uh, the dark colors are. So that when you're painting a picture, if you don't have the contrast, you have to have contrast for painting. The other thing that's really nifty about using this is if you're mixing a color and it would fall on, say, this side of the grayscale. I'll let me dry this and I can show you the other picture for a minute. Let me dry this and we'll continue that. Um, we're, I'm gonna, I've got to dry this picture and then we'll continue that about how you can use the grayscale to mix colors. All right? All right. I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way and start drying. I'm going to turn you. Well, I didn't get to turn her down fast enough. Um, yes, this lesson will be staying up. For those that are asking, we're going to keep working on this lighting situation. The lights have not changed. We did turn them on a half hour early. Um, it's a totally different camera. It's a little web camera that we're using for Ginger in the upper corner. And the one we're shooting down with is a very high-end camera. It's a newer one. We're still working that through. So appreciate your patience on that. Hey, let's take a look a little bit of the art that's come in. This is some stuff from the 2016. Ginger and I were reminiscing. And this particular one is Red Shoes by Terry Morse. Um, we have three. I want to show you three different ones. Uh, this, this is really close, very, you know, this is like Ginger did it. Next one was by Shirley Williams. A little bit of a variation on this. Yeah, something a little different. And then uh, Kayla. She went in a totally different direction. 
with this one. The person standing up. And when I see Ginger's back, and she probably wants me to turn her back up. Well, I, I want to make a comment real quick, John, about oh, that one. This was a, she went in a different direction. She designed that painting, and that's going to be the cover of a music album for her. That's very cool. So she designed her own music album, but she was inspired by the, 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 the lesson. That's the, thing, the kind of things we do, is that sometimes something that I'll paint, maybe will inspire you to paint something else, but then you got the technique down, so then you just take the next leap. And, you know, that's, that's what is a great thing about artists. All right, let me bring this original painting over now, okay? And I was talking about the grayscale, was I not? Um, and and how, that, how you can mix color. So here's the deal. So if, uh, do you have the black and white photo of this, John, anywhere? That you, you had it? No, we just shot, we just changed the camera to do that. Can, can we change the camera? Mm, I'm not sure what it would do to everybody. What would it do? What do you mean? Well, it's the main camera. I have to change the main camera to make it do something. Okay, all right. I mean, we can try it. If we I lose them, if we, we're not, why would we lose them? <laughs> we shouldn't lose them. It's just gonna. Let's try it. See, hey, if they're up see for if it. We can just turn this gray, yeah. this black and white for a minute. Let me uh, let me pop right over there. John's gonna try and uh, just don't go away, right? <laughs> we're gonna try not to. Use, I just want you to see what this would be like in a black and white. Or you can take this over to your scanner and just why don't you just print Quickly, this? I can do this. No. Okay. Let's just try. It. Come on. All right. We're gonna be adventuresome. All right. Maybe. I don't know. You can see all this stuff going on. I'm going to picture of fact. No, we're not. And black and white. Did we get it? You see black and white. All right, you guys, look at that. All right, so now, all right, so here you go. So now, here's our grayscale, all right? So you see all these reds in here are in this side of the grayscale. See these dark colors in here? They're all on this side, but now look here. This side of the grayscale has, a, here's our little grayscale right here. And these lighter colors here are on this side of the grayscale. All right, you see that? So now why, what does that mean to you? Well, what it means is, is that when you're mixing a color, if, the, if they were in black and white, if they were in black and white, if you're mixing a color, and they fall on the light side of the grayscale, you're gonna start with, to mix the color 98% of that color is either going to be white or yellow. Does that help you? 98%, okay? If it falls on the light side of the grayscale. Conversely, if it falls on the dark side of the grayscale, you're going to start with the darkest color. For instance, if we were mixing green, yellow and blue make green, you'd start with blue and then add tiny bits of yellow into it, okay? Once a color has crossed over, ooh, crossed over into the light, okay? It can never get that dark. There isn't enough paint in the world to make it dark again. All right. So once you've crossed it over into the light, if you need a dark, you need that darker. You have to start again mixing. This will save you hours of mixing paint. I think that's kind of helpful, isn't it? Good to know. Yeah. So all right. So we're going to take now that this is dry. We're going to take some chalk, and um, I'm going to come about say three fingers and put a little mark here, and then go toward the center. I think I will use a. I think I'll use brown so you can see it, all right, like this. I'm going to come toward the center of my canvas, and I'm just going to start with some sort of little wavy petal like this, all right? Then I'm going to take about three fingers and put a mark here, and about four fingers here, and I'm going to do some sort of little wavy petal right here. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to go about three fingers here, and about three fingers over here, and I want a little little petal that's coming out like this, all right? And then right here's our center here. So if this circle right here were a clock, okay, here's 12 o'clock, so right at 1 o'clock, right about 2 o'clock, I'm going to start with another petal that's going to come up here, and it's going to end about four fingers up from the edge of the canvas like that. And then we're going to come over here, straight up from 12 o'clock and over about 2, we're going to just do this. All right, so though, this is a very simple, you don't need a traceable for this, it's very simple curves like this, like that. There we go. I'm going to say here's a curve here. And uh, no two flowers are the same, so if your flowers looks a little different than mine, oh, we believe you. All right, how's that? So that's how we drew that in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same brush, and it's been in water, so I'm going to wipe it off, all right? And, and I'm going to talk about what do I know for sure. Well, I think 
the thing I can say is if you don't have this as a reference, let's just start on this side of the canvas, right? So what I know for sure is that I need some, you know, I need some colors in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of, um, say, uh, yellow, this cad yellow light, and a little <laughs> bit of cad red light, and make hey, a little orange color. I've got to share this one with you. Yeah, somebody said something fun? Well, it's funny. Hey, John, if you want to make this much bigger, do you just double the fingers? <laughs> I just thought that was cute. Yeah, it is funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well... How are you going to answer it? I don't know. Just, I give up. What are you going to do? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> I give up. What are you going to do? I have no idea. I just know that this is what we did. This, this was four was fingers, fingers for this size. This so. was two fingers here. <laughs> now this is three, right? So maybe it's five. You know what I mean? But basically it's a proportion of the canvas. I guess you'll have to grit it. You know, I, push comes to shove, you'll have to grit it. So I'm making a little bit of orange. I'm going to just come in here like this. Kind of glaze over some of this with orange a little bit, not too much here. Now, I want to take some orange and just sort of streak it in here. I'm going to change brushes. Ah, I knew. I, there was a, I had a plan how I did this. Here we go. Here's a half inch ruby satin silver angle brush. It's slightly damp because I washed it from before. Now, let's come back here and play with the colors. Let's put some color out here because I used all my cad yellow meat, meat light. So I'll put some more out. Okay. Now, all right, so I've got, it. I've got my little light orange color here. Now, I'm going to come in here like this and put a few little streaks just using on the angle. Same like this. Okay, like that. And I'm just going to move our um, uh, picture out of the way. So I'm starting to streak it, okay, toward the center. And uh, let's see, right about here, I'm just going to outline this. Um, these curves here, whatever I said these curves were, I'm just going to outline them. And then I'm going to take a little tiny bit of magenta, and I've got a little water in that dish, put a little water on it. I'm going to come right next to this, like this, using the, right next to the curve. Okay, now, we're going to take some zinc white and overlap that. A little bit of zinc white, right like that, overlap that uh, seam there. Now, wipe your brush. Now, blend that out. See how this little darker toward the center, okay? Now we're going to start bringing some curves out. Now I'm going to add a little bit of magenta and yellow to make more of an orange, okay? And we're going to start curving in from the center here. We're going to start curving these sort of veins in the flower. Going to come out this way, do some more, a little bit darker orange, okay? Like that. I'm going to have to move this out of here. Have to, I guess you'll have to trust me. <laughs> to be able to see see this. I have to be able to see the picture. I know you'd love to see it, but I don't have any way to show it to you in what I'm painting, so sorry. Well, I can zoom out a little bit once in a while they can see it. Uh, I'll just, yeah, I can zoom out a little bit. All right, now the same thing here. Back to this magenta color. I want to come around here, this, this petal. Now, see, the nice thing about an angle brush like this, the angle brush, is that you can do it flat or you can do an angle. You see, like that, and then you come back here with a little bit of the uh, magenta over uh, the the mixing white over it, and you see that's magenta. See, it sort of starts this little peach color. And now we're going to start again. The brush strokes are all going out this way. All right. So this is about layering colors on the painting. This is about layering your colors, and we'll do the same thing here. We'll come back with a little bit of this magenta, and we'll come up here like this, and we'll we'll do this, and I want to come out here like this. Now I'm going to just, um, oh, let's put our paper towel back. I always like to have a little piece of paper towel right next to my canvas so I can very easily wipe stuff off. Oh yeah, the other question that she had was about the, about the hues. Hues were, um, I, I have often wondered what a, the difference between hues were. Hues sounds like it might be lighter. Hues are, for instance, cad red medium hue is an artificially made color. In other words, it does, there's no cadmium in it, all right? So it's called a hue, and generally hues are brighter. And when they said permanent, I imagine that they're trying to say that. I'm, not, I'm guessing on this because I'm not sure what that mean, what they're meaning by that. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm thinking that they're probably meaning that it doesn't, um, it's not, um, it's not going to fade on you, okay? Even though it's not real cadmium, okay? Uh, cadmium is expensive of uh, uh, paint color. That means very expensive. Now, see, we're in here. 
coming toward the center like this, leaving some of that underpainting, leaving a little bit of that underpainting there. And uh, let's come over here and see, where are we here? Oh yeah, so here too. Oh gosh, we can outline this one too. Take a little of that magenta, follow along the curve we set of the flower. Now let's just take the flat of the brush. Now a little bit of water, tap it off. Now watch what happens when you overlap your edge with just a tiny bit of water to fade it out too. See that? See how we're fading out that edge? It's kind of So I don't have any striped ties here. It's all um, kind of melts out. You know, that color just sort of melts. And I take a little bit of magenta and, and zinc white. And I'm going to come this way and add some streaks toward the center. Like that. And just come this way. This side, this side of the petal is a little bit darker. I'm going to come this way. Then you lift up. You pull it and you lift up. It's kind of a fun flower. I think it's a kind of a fun, in, interesting picture. And it's all about layers. You know, that's what I would tell you. It's all about layers. Let's make this a little bit darker now. And take a little bit of that peach color, tiny bit of water, damp it off. Is there a reason that you're using the gray paper palette paper now instead of your plates? Yeah, because that gives me a lot more room. I, you know, originally when I was doing the six by eight canvases, the little paper plates were fine, right? You didn't, you didn't need very much paint, and, and they're cheaper than this. This palette paper stuff's more money, right? And right. The paper plates are fine, and they work fine for little tiny six by eight canvases. But when we're doing a show like this, it's easier. I have a bigger area to mix, right? And so um, it's easier. I mean, I only time we started using paper plates because that's what they used at painting parties. And, you know, they use them at painting parties and their paint kind of runs and it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a flow paint. It's, um, and, it's, you know, and it is fairly inexpensive to do that. Okay, so I'm going to add a little more of the peach here. So anyway, that's what you're, but if, um, if you see a hue, it, sometimes hues can be brighter colors. If you're doing flowers, flowers are some of the few things you can do right out of the tube. Did you guys know that? You can paint, you know, a lot of times you should mix, um, should mix your colors. Oh, that's yellow. I want white. Oh. Okay, so here, where's, let's put some, I want some titanium white here. Okay, there we go. Alright, so here's some titanium white now, because I want it lighter. Now I'm going to come in here like this with a little white. Like that, a little bit of white. Make some sort of pink color. Like that. There we go. And as long as I've got the white out, I want to come along this edge like this. Just that, remember, your white is very opaque, okay? That means you can't see through it. So here's our white. This is the white edge to this petal right here. Like that. And we've got a white edge over here, a little tiny bit of water. Tap it off right here. This one is white. Um, I really, I think a lot of people enjoy flowers. I think that uh, who, do, who doesn't love getting flowers? Flowers are always considered a lovely gift, and it's a nice if you have somebody that's not feeling well and you can give them a flower painting. It's a nice thing to do. Uh, this could be really pretty huge. I bet our friend Andrew in Haiti would probably make this like, you know, 48, 60 or something, make a giant one. <laughs> this could be very impressive big, but you've got to do it in really bold colors, you know, just, you know, and you've got to, you know, really layer it in. But this would be very pretty big, okay? So now you see, this doesn't take long to paint, so I'm going to take a little bit of white and cad yellow light, which I think I had some over here. And I want this, to, I'm going to lighten this up, this edge. See what happened here when I did that? Okay, now what? Well, wipe off the paint, put a little water on the brush, tap it off, and then just take the water and just soften that edge. Do you see what I'm doing? And there's enough other colors on my brush, because I haven't rinsed it, where that just melts in. Do you see how that's just beautifully melting in? The same thing here. I take a little water and kind of wake up that orange and I want to come this way and just using the width of my brush kind of darken this edge here on this flower start bringing these colors in this is really fun this is easy to do this is very relaxing and a brush like this you can do the whole painting with this brush very nice okay now where, where am I losing it right here I think you're not quite in this frame here all right, so I need some more light. So I'm going to take some zinc white and a little cad yellow uh, medium, and I'm going to come up here like this. Here's some zinc. Let's just take some pure zinc, and let's just pull some. Um, it's a very translucent white. 
can see through it. Okay, and let's just pull some of these streaks. We need some streaks coming. And I'm going to come this way off the canvas like that. Okay. And let's see, where might I want some of those? Maybe back up in here. Might want a few little white streaks like that. And for sure, maybe a few more here. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. And back to titanium, I'm going to come over here and lighten this area up right here again. Right like that on this edge. I want it lighter, but I don't want that line. So wipe your brush off and then just sort of soften the edge. You can take a little tiny water, put a water and soften the edge there so that you just, you don't, you want to blur that line. I guess that would be the way to say it. When I say soften it, you want to blur it. Um, do I have any great questions, John, where we're just happily painting along here? Oh, I'm so sorry I'm answering them all. You've educated me so well, I'm just kind of buzzing through these babies. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. So I can keep um, you focused. You know, we, we have, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, because we know people like, um, going back to titanium white here, let's just, we need more of a curve on this petal here than I drew, so let's just put that back. Okay? And let's take a little bit of yellow with it. A little bit of yellow. There we go. Let's just, yeah, well, that's pretty, isn't it? Okay, let's say that makes it a little bit brighter yellow. Just streak some of that in here like that. I like that yellow. Where can I, else can I put it? Maybe right here. Because remember, we're layering. We're layering the colors coming out this way. But the brush direction is important. This is curving. It's not going straight. See that? So, Anyway, we, we do a lot of um, flower paintings. We have a lot of flower paintings. We'll show you a few on our uh, gingercooklive.gallery. One of my favorite ones is Rainbow Rose. I'm going to stop for a minute and just show you that. Isn't this a cool picture? Don't yeah, you just love that? What size did uh, what size That's did the rain That's 8x10, but, but uh, one, of my, one of our friends did this 30x40, um, uh, uh, and it's stunning in her house. She went, you know what she did? She took the 8x10, and she went over to Kinko's, and she blew it up at the, to 30 by 40 on a black and white, because that's cheap. And, um, and then she traced it on and then painted it in, 8 by 10, uh, uh, 30 by 40. And that, is, that painting is so beautiful big, I can't tell. Just stunning big. I really, if you like big paintings, that one just knocks it out of the park. I posted that. That was Lorraine uh, Speaks. I posted that uh, um, on our, our Pinterest uh, uh, page. Too, under under ginger cooks uh, students it's under un, under not under our regular gallery but under our Houston students where I teach lessons in Houston okay so all right so we've got some you can see where we've got a few little of these light streaks coming through and we want to make sure we have some good contrast now wherever there's a light there's a dark so at this point I will rinse my brush because I've had white on it and you know kind of wipe it off here now we're going to go into some maybe some magenta and a little bit of naphtha crimson. Let's get a dark red going here. And I'm going to come along here and I want this corner to be nice and dark next to this petal. See? This is my next, you know, now a little bit of water, wipe it off, and then soften that edge. See that? Just soften the edge. Like that. There you go. So that's, that's nice. That's a, that's a good trick. These are some of the things I'm showing you, sort of brush tricks. And the same thing here. You know you want something dark coming along here like this, right? And it's going to come out this way, right, to sort of separate the petals, all right? A little bit magenta. Let's, uh, let's get this nice and dark here, right along here like this. Maybe put a streak going this way. Now, um, I'll just rinse the brush and just work on the edge a little bit to soften it so that I don't have a hard line. There we go. Like that. And then bring that pink out there. Okay. These are just some of the things that, you know, you can do. I'm looking at this original picture thinking I need a kind of a light yellow streak in here. I've lost a few. You can't screw this up because if you lose your light, you can put it back, you guys. And the same thing here. You can put your, you know, you can put your light back. If you've lost it, just paint it back. There, that's got to be, got to feel like a relief. You can put it back. And the same thing here. I want this brighter here. And I'm just going to come up here and lift that off. And I want a little bit more light in here. Just even just with a little time. There we go. A little bit more light here. 
because we're going to glaze over some of this. I want to make sure I have it light. There you go, like that. So you see that the whole painting is sort of coming to life. So that rainbow rose was one that we did that we have, and also that's available. This rainbow rose painting also has a whole tutorial on how to do um, water droplets. For instance, if you want to put water droplets all over this flower, it has that, and um, which is I think it's kind of cool. And I think that did it come with this, or was this this was? Right, yeah. Let's lighten this up a little bit. What we're going to do now is uh, dry this so we can glaze on the next colors. Ooh, here we go again. Video froze. Hold on a second. Yeah. We we're having a spooling problem. It's not maintaining the speed, and I can't change the speed. Now, you go ahead and draw. I'm going to turn you down. Okay. Bad. It streams bad right now. We didn't have internet problems around here. Is it back now? All right. She's drawing at the moment. Um, we've been having high winds. I think it's messing things up a little bit. And her internet was out all night. We're on my internet. And it looks like it's having problems too. So let's, um, what do we got going on here? Well, she's drawing. Oh, I want to show you. We got a couple of birds. Uh, well, it's a bird. Animals. Let me go to animals. This little bird was done by uh, Victoria. It's a cute little winter guy. I know some of you guys are still experiencing the winter. If you're still seeing a fuzzy screen, you probably need to try to bump your speed up. Try, try to go 480. Um, we are having a, a little bit of problem uploading today. So I just kind of keep that in mind. Let me give you one more while she's... What is she doing over there? I'm good. I'm just kind of smoothing oh, this she's out. Paying. Well, She's smoothing something out. Let's, let me just bring, I want to show, show you guys to see this little fox. That fox was done by Carol Wood. I think that's a great little job there. Let's go back to Ginger. Oh yeah, Carol did a great job on that fox and he has such a, that's the thing about it. When you're painting, you know, you guys, when you're painting things, you bring your own personality, your own experiences, life experiences to your paintings. And that fox is looking like, yeah, like you and who else? And what do you got in mind? Isn't that, isn't that the coat, coat under there? What do you got in mind? So yeah, what I, are you gonna I, do? We, I really, you know, I think that's fun. I think it's fun, with, you know, that we're all experiencing this together. I think that this is really a cool thing. We picked up a couple new members from Belize. I want to welcome them and uh, to gingercooklive.gallery. And if they're watching our live show, it's, I think that's kind of great. I mean, John and I were just in Belize. What a cool country that is. It was very hot, though, as I recall. And I think this isn't even their hot time, but it was a very nice. We had a good time there. We just got back from a trip. And we're always looking for new things to paint, things to, to bring, you know, you guys some fun stuff to do. I'm going to come back here to our picture. Um, now I've got my center thing. So now it's time to start doing our darker colors, all right? That's, that's what I tell you. So I want to do our darker colors here. And I want to... Um, Start taking a little bit of a little bit of water here and a little magenta, okay? And I'm going to come in the center like this, and I'm just going to do this and lift up like this. And I've, got, I've watered this down, so it's almost like a glaze. I'm going to come in here like this and lift up in a starburst pattern like this. Okay, see what I'm lifting up, lifting up. Now the back part of this flower has a little bit more of this than the front. Now, here's our magenta, and we're going to do it over here, and I want a little bit of yellow with it, because I want, um, I want the, on, as I go to the right, I want it um, a little oranger. I'm going to start lifting up here, a little tiny bit of water on the brush. There we go. There we go, like that. Ginger, if you wanted to use a knife and gels, you know, like a palette, would you use basically the same type of stroking that you're doing with the brush? If I was going to do this with a palette knife and gels, you know, probably what I would do is I would probably build this up with modeling paste and then paint over it. You know that? Well, yeah, you did that on one lesson, didn't you? I'd probably build the whole thing up with modeling paste and then paint over it, okay? that's I think that's how I'd do it. Have All a right. little bit more control over it. Yeah, uh, but, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do stuff. Okay, so now we're going to come this way. The same thing with this one. Let's take a little bit of, make this a little oranger here. 
at the base. Okay, lift up. Now, so this sort of the glazing here. Now, the front part, this is the shortest right here. This is our shortest area of the dark circle. And you want to make sure you're using the edge of the brush here to get that. Um, put a little bit of this orange up here like that. Okay. All right. Now, that's pretty good. See, now we just, this is all about layers. So I'm going to come back in here with the magenta. And I want to go all the way inside here. And maybe a little bit of apple crimson. And while that's drying, I'm going to darken this again. I need this, this little a bit darker right in here. Do you remember what colors you used to create that salmon color? Yeah, the salmon is a really easy color to create. It's, um, it's just cad yellow, um, light, uh, white, and um, cad red medium. You know, but if, if you just said yellow, so the salmon's really easy color to get, really easy. You just add yellow to orange. I mean, white, white, yellow, and um, more, more, more white to orange, and you get kind of a salmon color. Okay. Now I'm going to come back here with a little bit of dapple crimson and magenta, and I'm going to start my next layer of color. Okay. Now this is darker. This is darker. I'm going to come up here like this. Magenta, cad red, medium, and I'm going to come up here, and this is darker still. And I don't go up as far. So this is nap I'm rather napo crimson and magenta. And coming up here, the same thing here. I want this darker coming out of the flower like this. Out of the center of the flower. And then as I come this way, it's a little shorter here on this side. Okay, and then up here the same thing. I'm gonna do this sort of starburst pattern. Alright, so that's our first little bit of dark center. Isn't that pretty? And uh, make sure that you've got some, um, you know, good contrast on these edges. Um, that's what I would tell you. Let's try a little bit of orange. Let's make a little orange color and make sure that we've got some orange coming back this way. Off of some of here, maybe darken some of these. There we go. Just need a little bit more contrast in some of this because I've got some tricks to show you. All right, there we go. All right, there. All right, nice. Just darken that edge up a little. It can be very pretty. The same thing here. Let's just come this way and uh, bring that out from the edge and lift up. Out from the edge and lift up. See how we're forcing the eye into the center, okay? All right, so, so far so good. Now I have to dry the center. If I want this darker, I have to dry the center one more time. There's only so much layering you can do. I can come back here with some brighter cad yellow medium and magenta and make some orange here and make some brighter orange streaks. Let's see if I can get away with that. Magenta, cad yellow medium makes a pretty nice bright orange. It's like that. There we go. I had some yellow oxide and I really just didn't use it. Um, I just, I think I put it out, but I don't really think we're going to use it. Okay, like this. A little bit darker and then maybe some pure, pure cad red in a couple places. Cad red, cad red medium is is an orange red. All right, that's what you need to remember about that color. Okay, and the, remember brush direction has got to kind of come up like this. There we go, like that. So that's our flower, and let's see, a little bit of color right here. All right, I'm going to stop a minute and dry this. All and right. See how we're doing. Okay. All right. Well, she's busy drying that. I'm going to let you guys know, she can't hear me, she has a birthday coming up, uh, February 1st, and she is going to be giving you guys a present. The entire world will be able to download for free a real full-fledged Ginger Cook original painting lesson. This is for everybody, all humans, aliens alike can also paint. Love to have you participate in this. Look for more exciting news about this in the coming days. Sammy and I have been looking around trying to figure out what kind of painting she's offering. The other night, last night, she showed us the palette, but we don't know exactly what she's doing. So keep your eyes open for that. Okay, she should be about done. Uh, let's take a look at one of the... Oh, look, you got to see this. You, you guys have got to see this. Look at this. Oh, it's sideways. Well, be, turn your head just for a moment. 
That is a canvas. Tote bag. Yeah, canvas you tote bag that you me Christine up? did it. Yeah, you're, you're back on. Yeah, just, yeah, canvas tote bag. Isn't that cute? She bought 12 of them because she, she got a deal on them, and she's been giving these away as gifts of practicing her paintings on those and then giving them as gifts. Isn't that cute? That's Christine Gerst. That's yeah, that's just that's great. great job. Very nice. It's, it's fun to see what you guys do and come up with. Everybody has some great ideas. Um, I'm going to take a little piece of chalk now, and I want to come up here, and I want to do the stem from the center here. It's about as wide as my little finger. And it tapers, it tapers up to the top like that. There's my stem. All right. So, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint that white. Okay. And, uh, and dry it. I didn't have time to do that in the other one, but I'm going to do it on this one. Kind of frays at the top. You know, kind of splits. This, there you go. There it is. Just white. Okay. Now that's, that's, our, that's our little stem in the middle. And there's a reason why I'm painting it white. You'll appreciate it. Now, I've got to dry that for a second, John. Can't do anything else. I'd dry that. But what I could do is show you something with the zinc white as opposed to the mixing white. Rinse my brush. Make sure I don't have any titanium. Let me get out a little uh, mixing white. We'll just do a little experiment, shall we, where you can see it. Come on. Out you come. All right. So now, here's a little mixing white. And uh, let me move this over here, just kind of wipe my brush off, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I can come up here like this. Wait a minute, you moved off the... Did I move off here? Yeah, I'm going to come up here like this in this corner. Because it's transparent, you've got to think of it as cellophane, you can come here like this, and you can... Very subtle veins in this flower, and they're very translucent. It's not like using titanium, so you can add a few little veins. I can come back. Oh, it's the wrong one. This is why you label everything. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just look. Just get in the habit of Especially doing that. Especially when the whites all look the same. Yeah, they're all mm -hmm. next to each other, right? So, so, so that look, look what happens when I come up here over this petal. It's just, it's very clear. And if you, particularly if you thin it with water a little bit, it does a nice job of streaking. And the same thing here. I'm going to show you right here, too. Like there. Just like that. I'm going to just do a few little very soft, subtle streaks. It'll lighten stuff up a little, but won't be as, as bold as, say, white. Okay? And it, um, even if I go over this right here like that, look at that. Just that's me. All right, now here's zinc white. I'll do that on one of the other petals. Let's do that on this one. Okay? And it's even more translucent, the zinc white, than the mixing white. So if you needed a few little light streaks somewhere, and you can paint over some of like for instance, if you needed that orange streak pushed back, do you see how that pushes that orange streak back? And, and what I mean is it makes it lighter because and it, you want to make sure it's dry when you do this, all right? The same thing right here. If I wanted to lighten this right up here where this, where I'm going to do something else, I could lighten this right here. Because I'm going to put some dark right there. Or maybe come, this is still the zinc. Maybe come right here. And light, lighten this edge up where this yellow was. Bring it down a little further. But now look, I'm going to just show you the difference. Now if I bring it down, you barely see it. It just disappears into the flower. You don't really see it. Now there is a tube of paint called Mixing White, right? Yeah, it's called Mixing White. It's called, it's called Mixing White. This is, uh, this is called Liquitex Mixing White. This is what we use 90% of the time, and it's part zinc white, part, part titanium. Like a 50-50 like mix. A, yeah, something like that. So, um, so this is, I'm just showing you this because everybody says, I don't understand the difference. If you had zinc, you probably don't need mixing. And, you know, I mean, it's just whatever you can buy, you know, whatever you can get, you know, get that. Okay? See, I'm using the edge of the brush here and kind of look at these great streaks. And it's very, very subtle stuff. And then maybe like over here. Here's a little tiny bit of water on the brush, a little bit of zinc. Tap it off here, just at the edge here. Can come up here like that. Very subtle. Like that, just at the edge here, like that little starburst. It's an interesting effect. I really, it's very, very subtle. And I, I don't think this is, I still have to dry that, so I'll do that. If you have any other public service announcements, John, or want to brag more on some of our students, I have feel a free. little more bragging, I think. Okay. All right, we saw the, the uh, 
I saw a question go by about hooping the a canvas bag. Ginger just put cardboard in hers. Um, here's another painting from Jacqueline. This is the uh, garden chair. That looks pretty darn close to what Ginger gave us. We did the rainbow rose. Oh, this is... See, speaking of the rainbow rose, here's Linda the Chow's rainbow rose. I like, the, I like how she did the streaking in the back on hers. And I think Ginger's back with us. I'm back. All right, so there's another example of our rainbow rose, and that's really nice. And, I mean, there's a lot, you know, and, again, the water droplets are very nice. And, and, and it's a fun painting to do. I've just, and if you guys are into flowers, these are some great things you can do. All right, now I'm back to the um, stem here. What I need to do here, and I can realize I feel like I'm, this blouse is kind of falling there. Like, all right, there. Now, all right, so what I want, and my two-tone, let me just show you. Here's my, uh, the stem, and it's kind of a yellow, and it's sort of a pink down here. I'm going to take, um, it's a yellow-green, so let's see, I need a smaller brush. All right, so that was a half-inch. This is a uh, 3 8 inch ruby satin silver and a w w angle brush. Just ordered some new ones today. Now I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, okay, and a little cad yellow medium, and I'm going to make a kind of a green color. It's had a little red in it, but that's okay. Like a little kind of a, more yellow than blue, kind of a little lime green color. And uh, let's see, I'm going to wipe that off now. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the cad yellow light and go over the stem first with a little of the yellow light color. And the reason I'm doing that is that yellow only paints well over white. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into this green color and add a bit of this green and just a little bit more of the darker color. Just add some um, part of the stem. Now what was fun about the stem, just up here like this. Now. I can't do much more here because we have to darken the sides here. But I think I can get that in and just let that sit up like that. Okay, so I'm letting that sit. And as long as I'm doing that, I'll take a little bit of water, clean brush, and magenta, and go over the white here. Now look how pink that looks. I had tried to get that color before on the other one. I wasn't getting it because... I didn't do it over white. The only way to get that is to do it over white. All right, now let's take some magenta and ultramarine blue, and let's make a dark, darker um, burgundy color like this. This is our darker burgundy color. And what we need to do is come next to our um, little stem here in the middle, stamen thing. What's that called, John? Stamen thing, right? Yeah, but okay. that's scientific enough for us. Okay. Okay, and we're coming out from this. We're giving it some contrast. I'm not going up, lifting it up. And we're going to start coming out. I want to just very carefully paint around this so that I have that. Now I'm going to go into Cad Red Medium. And um, let's see, let's pinch the brush off. I'm not going to rinse it, I'll just pinch it. All right, so here's some Cad, or oh, Naphthal Crimson actually. Let's come out from here, and I want some Naphthal Crimson going up above this. And again, I want this a little bit darker here, so we're starting to layer in the darker colors like that. Okay, so we're getting, need this deep, dark um, center. Let's put a little more purple here, bring it out here like that. Now, if you had Dazzling Purple, I suppose you could use that too. Okay. Now, now and we want to come up. Now, for me, the easiest way to do that for the skinny line is this brush is still good, this one right here, because that, that other one is kind of shot. So I'm going to come up here with my little thin um, little streaks of color like this. See, I'm coming up here. and It's on the angle. You start with the long part of the brush down and then lift up like this. These angle brushes are the bomb. I'm telling you what, you can, you can almost do a whole painting with these angle brushes. I love them. You know, they're really nice. And you see how that was magenta and ultramarine blue. We've got this real pretty uh, dark purple color. You want to come up around here like this. Okay, and the same thing here. want to make sure that we've got a little bit of water on there. Tap it off. There we go. Okay, and come up here with the streaks. Make sure that we've... There we go.
out from that. Ah, oh, isn't that cool? Got some great, um, great contrast. All right, and layers, that's the key. We have great contrast and layers. There we go. Kind of fold it around, and then maybe even in this fold, I'll just bring a dark there. All are right, you, now what? That's cool. Are okay. you, excuse me. Are, are you familiar with the Maltese Brilliant Azilrin? Is it like the... Matisse Brilliant Azilrin. Is it like the Azilrin? Azilrin Crimson? Yeah, is it like that one? Um, you know what? I've got a whole thing on YouTube on Adventures in Red, so it'll tell you what it is. Ah, Adventures in Red. I remember okay, that Okay, look one. at that, because I, I bought every red they had and went through it, so... You can look at that because off the head I can't tell you, but if I, I'd have to go back and look at what I wrote, what <laughs> I did in that video because I didn't know either. I mean, I just used a few colors. Lizard crimson is a nice one too, though. Lizard crimson is a wine-colored color. Yeah, I mean you can use those colors. You could, I could have used dazzling purple too. Just saying, and some red. But I just did uh, ultramarine blue and natural crimson or magenta make a really decent purple. I mean, kind of a more of a warm purple, but it's a nice color. All right, now what we've got here is um, around here we're going to take some ultramarine blue now and we're going to make some little spots dark almost like seeds going around here like this around our pot and it's just ultramarine blue here but it's over this dark color like this okay I'm going to show you that I'm going to do that okay dark dark here we'll do it right here like that these little ones like that Maybe one up here. And then what I did, you can barely see it. You can zoom in on that, John, for me. Come on, boss. That. Are you as far as that, that we go here? No. All right, can you kind of see it? Now, I've made these little dark seed spots right here, just with the ultramarine blue over that wet color. Now what I'm going to do is rinse the brush, and I put out a little tiny bit of phthalo blue, and I'm going to get some... Um, uh, white with it, a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue with it there. Now, I want you to see I'm just right in the center using my angle brush. I'm just going to do this. Touch it. Done. Okay? Now, as long as I've got that, let's just take some green and yellow and make a green color. Just take cad yellow medium and come over here to our palette. Zoom back out. And Well, I, I don't know, maybe not too far. And then we made a little green color just by adding some yellow to that. Now we're going to come up on our stem, and we're going to put these funny little, like, um, I don't know, they look like broccoli things. <laughs> whatever they are, I don't know what they are. Little round dotty things here. That's part of the pollination but process. Whatever, whatever these are, we're putting them in. <laughs> All right, I, I don't know. What, we're doing it, right? Just, we're putting them in. I get a little bit more yellow. Put on the top of these, like this, a little, oops, too much. A little highlight. Like that, a little touch, just a tiny bit of yellow. A little highlight on that. There. Okay, so that's our little stemmy thing here. Okay. Now, all, oh, very good. Our stemmy now, things. Stemmy things. Now I'm going to do another layer of glaze over this. Barely touch it, but just right here. Just darken that up just a hair, right like that. Make that a little darker. And then wh what goes up here, which is kind of cool, what goes up here is this funny little, it looks, it like looks, a little hat. It looks, it's like a little hat. It's like five, um, let me just show you on my chalkboard. Ooh, we love the chalkboard lessons. All right, I'll show you on the chalkboard, because I mean, I didn't believe it when I saw it, so. All right, so there's just your st stemmy thing here that's doing this, okay? And then you've got this sort of round thing, and then you've got... It looks like those flowers we used to do in school when we were kids, right? Looks like that. That's what it is. That that's on top, right? And this was lighter in the middle than those. How's that? I mean, that's pretty easy, right? Just saying. It's a so nice once you because you got to understand. Here's what you can't do until you see the shape. You can't paint it. Did you guys know that you have to be able to put the shape in your mind to paint it. So let's come up here with some titanium white. And a little bit of magenta, and let's make a mostly white. Let's just come up here, and we'll make the center up here like that. Like that. We'll say up here is the center of this. This little flowery thing. And then I will take some, um, maybe some naphthal crimson. That's a good thing. 
We're going to come around and we'll do these little dots coming around it like that. Okay, like that. There's these little dots. And then make those darker. Then we've got to shade the bottom of that maybe with a little orange like this so that it's not quite there. It's a little darker here, right? Like that. Put a little orange there. And then a little tiny bit of white on top to kind of give it a little highlight. And then a little highlight on each one of these. Toop, toop, toop. Okay. And then I want to take a little bit of white and yellow and come down here like this. There we go, on the bottom of that. And then let's see. This. Okay. Now, I mean, that, uh, come on, tell me this wasn't just a super easy flower to paint. Wasn't it? You want to zoom back out for us? Let's just, let's just go back out. How far out you want to go? Well, about like this. You can kind of see it, right? Now you can kind of see it. I might, uh, just a couple places, take that thalo blue and white and lighten up a couple of these right here in the front. Let's take some titanium and thalo blue. I wanted a couple of these slightly lighter here like that because that got kind of dark on our center. A little light highlight there. Let's put the blue. But that, you guys, is our picture. You know, that's our picture. And what you can do then, all you have to do now, for instance, to finish it is just um, go around and do a little tiny bit of glazing here and there. All right, like for instance, I'll take a little bit of, say, this orange color with a little water, right? And I might come up over here like this and maybe soften this. Or I might come this way from the edge here and soften this just a little bit, you know, just glaze over. Glaze is any time like a tea stain, you know, just like that. Glaze that. Maybe come back out here, darken this corner. I mean, you're the artist. Play with that a little bit. For sure, over here, I want to have a little more orange coming off at this side, like, like this. Let me glaze back over here. You don't want to lose all your white. And uh, do I need to make any of this darker? Now, some of the things that you can do is you can kind of darken. I want to make sure I have enough dark coming up this far. And I might bring this up a little bit more, some of these, like this with my reds and magentas, you know, bring that up a little more. But I'd say we were in good shape here as far as our flower goes. Like that. There's our flower. And that's how you paint it. And if you, uh, it wouldn't have to be in the reds. You could paint this. And, you know, these uh, hi uh, hibiscus come in all kinds of colors. Yeah, I would just Google hibiscus and get some samples. Because Ginger you, just came up with this one. She created this one. This is a Ginger Cook original. And, uh, but you certainly could, um, you know, come up and, and do that. I mean, that would be a fun thing to do. And I would say that, you know, if you figure you've got 11 by 14 painting, it's not that difficult. But the brush strokes are everything. If you'd gone back and forth or hadn't, you know, hadn't, um, hadn't really planned how your brush strokes are, the, the flower wouldn't have come out as nifty as it did. And uh, let's see, I'm going to take a little mixing white and kind of soften this right here right here on this petal, right like that, where that white is. I want it a little bit lighter right there. Maybe something a little bit lighter there. Maybe some titanium right here. Just, I want this edge. There we go. And ginger. Something like that. Hold it up and, uh, once you're done, hold it up so we can see it in the other camera. Okay, I will do that. I can do that. I would just, I'm just, you know, see, yeah. I'm going back here. You Let's can just remember to do that. And they're asking, when is the horse going to be released? The horse, uh, wildfire is for February 16th right now. Well, the angel's getting released, um, and we're, we're getting those mailed off. We haven't mailed them off yet if you're waiting for your angel painting. We're waiting to find our boxes. We had a bunch, of, you know, but those are getting mailed off this week. And the, the angel, actually, the angel tutorial will be on our website, um, we're shooting for Thursday. I have day one done. I have two more days to go through. And We're I think it's only Thursday. Tuesday. And, oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, there's more. There's more. Now, for those of you who missed yesterday's show, um, on, uh, on February 1st, which is my birthday, we're going to give away 
to everybody. It doesn't matter, remember or not. Everybody. Yeah, I, I, I kind of hinted to this when you were you're, uh, you're gonna, We're going to be giving away a, a, some sort of nifty uh, uh, painting lesson that you'll be able to go over to our website and download and own. Won't just have to watch it. On, uh, we're not going to put it up on YouTube. You'll actually go to the website and you'll be your person. You're going to own it, right? So I thought that would be sort of fun. And we'll uh, be telling you more about that. And, uh, you know, I thought that was exciting good news. And did you tell them about the personal art coaching we're now offering? Well, you know, members? I did not get a chance to do that. Yeah, Can you just, tell me about that? Well, you know, I, you know, you guys all know that I offer personal art coaching to members who subscribe to us. And really, if you figure that if you're a senior and it, it you know, twenty one ninety five that be able to a month, just be able to send me your art and have me comment on it. That's the deal. If you ever got a, if there weren't over two hundred sixty lessons to watch anyway. But if you want to just try us for a week, you can still have access to those two hundred sixty lessons. I don't know, you know, pick the ones that are interesting to you, and you can send in one lesson and have me, um, you know, give you some advice on what you're painting. I think that's kind of a cool thing. Let me hold this up now, like that, and there's our. There's our uh, there's our flower here. Does it tilt tilted? Yeah, well, yeah, up uh, okay. right. Um, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. So is that like this, right? Yeah. Well, you can see what you're doing, right? There yeah, you go. Yeah, right there. So there. There's our flower. Come on, that's cool. Now I'm going to show you the other one. Pretty see? similar. They're pretty similar, right? Because and you should be able to, you know, come. Isn't this fun? Isn't this a great thing? I love this. And um, anyway, there's our hibiscus. I hope you under. Uh, if you got nothing out of this lesson except the importance of brush direction, I think then that's you got absolutely the point. cool. Then that's the uh, whole idea behind this. We appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, every once in a while, there was a mad scramble today for people going, I didn't, how am I going to hear about this? How do I get on the channel? If you subscribe and hit that little bell dingy thing there, um, what happens is, is that we... Um, we don't. YouTube. We don't. YouTube then... Um, will let you know if I, if I, when I'm going to be live or anybody else live that you like. But that's, but that's what you have to do. You can't just subscribe. But first off, you have to subscribe, and then, you, then you'll be given an alarm saying Ginger's on or, you know, whatever. And sometimes we do these surprise videos. You never know. But for sure, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays for now, we're doing it at 7.30. Tomorrow night, we're going to do something else so totally different than flowers. We're going to talk about shadows, and that's, um, that's sort of a hint for tomorrow night. I think that'll be fun. And now, I'll tell you one thing. When you varnish this, this will bring out the colors. It'll really pop. It'll really pop. And this is where, a painting like this, this is where I would do the string gel finish on this. Oh, the thick I'd, one. I'd, I'd pour that thick honey string gel on it and spread it all around. I'd be And so then nervous. I'd put it on there like glass. That'd look that cool. But for sure, I'd varnish it. I wish I could show you. Could I show them real quick, John, what would happen if I varnished it? I'm going to show you. Um, I don't have so any gonna varnish. So you're going to go back down? I don't have any varnish. I'd show you. Nope, can't show you. Too bad. So um, <laughs> I, if I had some varnish, I'd show you. But um, maybe tomorrow night I'll show you. How's that? Tomorrow yeah, night, yeah, that I'll way it's fully dry. And that'll be totally dry. And I'll show you one little section where we varnish it. And the varnish pops the colors back out. You know, they're so bright and pretty. You know, you get up here on this palette, it's so bright and pretty. And sometimes they kind of lose their luster. Have you noticed that? When, you, when they dry... Well, that's what the varnish does. It's like a color popper. It brings the color back out. Yeah, you, the varnish, um, unlike oil painting varnish, which is totally different, acrylic varnish brings the color back out on your picture. That is really, really important. And, and, and if you want to do that. Oh, one more picture I wanted to show you. If you like flowers, I wanted to show you this one. This is another one of our lessons on, on our gallery site, and I love this. This is called just. I think we just called this the red flower. Red flower. If you like doing, if you like doing flowers, that's a really cool one. Um, and then, oh yeah, Christmas flower. Now we're really sorry about this. We did half of it on YouTube, and the other half was to go on our channel. We forgot, and, and Manette <laughs> uh, <laughs> said, "Hey, where's the, where's the Christmas flower? Oh, where is that? You're right. Where's the Christmas flower?" So. John's going to have the whole. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that's upside down, but just in case you think it is, it might be. It is. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I can tell because my signature's there, so that must be right. So we've got this Christmas flower, and that'll be on our website, uh, gingercooklive.gallery. You got half of it on YouTube, but if you want the whole lesson, that'll be on. Um, <laughs> that'll be on uh, the website. That'll be on the website. John's getting that ready now, and we're really sorry. We just forgot. So anyway, We've that's been busy, going busy, up. Busy, 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 shooting, shooting, shooting. Now we the question came up in regards to the 
um, birthday present to you guys as a download only? No, it'll be able to be played on our website or be able to be downloaded. Yeah, you don't so have to both. download it. You do not have to download. You will be able to watch it on our site as well. well but it's yours. But it's yours. It'll be there. It'll it, it belongs to, do it. to you, you know. Um, when she varnishes, this, will she record it? Well, she, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I, you know, I, yeah, what I can do tomorrow night is I'll varnish a little bit of it. Well, they, we'll see. We'll see. We'll talk. We'll, we'll take this offline. That's what they say. That's technical talk. Take it offline. Okay. Well, we don't know. But <laughs> anyway, we'll try to do something. And listen, if you've got a brush like that, if you don't have one of these brushes, oh, public service announcement. Oh, we have public we've, service announcement. We, we, we've been telling people, and this is kind of cool. We've been telling people that the our favorite place to buy brushes, and I just ordered hundred dollars worth of brushes today, so I get buy brushes from them too. These people don't give me any of these brushes. But my favorite place is the brush guys. They specialize in brushes. The best price I've found, and if you use the my code Ginger Cook, all one word, small letters, you get five percent off. Now, what we discovered was that some we tried to order the other day, and we put my code in because I get it too. Okay, and. Um, it, it the code didn't work, so we called them up, and apparently it it works in, it worked in some places in the country and not in others. And so they said if you had ordered brushes, try to use a code, one of the artist codes that they have up there. Uh, what they said was that you could um, write them, and and you know and and show them you know, and say look, I bought these brushes and I tried to put the code in, I didn't get it, I bought them anyway. Or just go ahead and buy the brushes and then email them right then, and they will credit your card, your credit card with the code. And the reason we like them is because they sell, not only do they have great prices, but they, they ship overseas. And did we, we didn't pay shipping, did we, John? No, our order was over $100, so over apparently $100, we, so didn't we didn't pay, pay shipping. shipping. And, uh, and, and I, I tell you what, I, and the reason it was over $100 is I bought like, you know, four of one brush and three or four of another, but you got to appreciate it. I do so much more painting than you do. Brushes wear out, and I, like, I bought another one of these, and I bought another one of, um, I really, I only own one of these uh, filberts, which are really nice when we do big paintings. Number 12 filbert. And then I bought um, a, a couple of the brights, and I bought about six of the, of the 3 8 inch angle brushes. I bought a bunch of those, and they were out of another angle brush I wanted. So, anyway. Uh, on that string, since you mentioned the string gel medium, didn't we, didn't we do a video on that? Oh, we did, didn't we? Oh, I don't remember. We oh, it was the mask. We did the mask. Remember, we did we, the mask. We did the mask, and I and I would show you the mask, but I gave the mask to my, the picture of the mask to my hairdresser. We did a we did a video on how to do that. Where is that video? Is it in, in our area? In yeah, it's, it's on our website. Okay, it's on our website. Uh, I did I did the string gel and put the put it on the small little six by eight mask, a Mardi Gras mask, and I gave the mask to my hairdresser uh, for Christmas as a gift. And you can I, tell by your hair it was well worth the bribe. So thanks, John. That's very nice. But hey, anyway, so, um, yeah, so I gave it to her. She was thrilled to have it. So, anyway. Woo, there goes something. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. So, any more questions before we sign off? We appreciate it. Please subscribe, nope. likes, comments. And remember, your comments that show live don't show on our regular channel. So, your feedback afterwards is muchly appreciated. Anything you write, and we appreciate it. And I will get back to all of you. Thank you, everyone. We will see you tomorrow night for Ginger Cook, Ginger Snaps on Wednesday. Ginger, Ginger Snap lesson. And with that, we bid you a good evening. Thank you one and all. Remember, subscribe, chat, share. Do it all for us. We appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Bye.